for all he does for us. He holds all of this in his hand and all of us in his hand for sure. Uh, we'll ask the men to come forward for the morning offering. And as they're coming forward, uh, Brother Dale, would you pray for the offering this morning? Amen.
Amen and amen. Let's stand together as we sing, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. seated and as we talk about our uh, uh, want to mention our announcements this morning we don't have a lot uh, on the plate we do want to mention our Wednesday evening service at seven o'clock we invite everybody out for that um, very st thankful to see Jim and Nancy back with us and, and feeling healthy now uh, we know that was a, uh, a tough road for you and uh, we're also still praying for Franklin Irvin, and um, as uh, they're recovering as well. We especially want to lift up uh, Cindy Snyder. Um, uh, she's had a rough time of it, been in the hospital this week, and her battle is not over. And so we uh, hope and, and pray for her continued healing and uh, Lord, this process that she has to go through is just very, very tough on her. So keep her in your prayers. She needs your prayers for certain. Are there any other announcements that I may have missed? Or anything else happening? Um, I will mention that uh, there is a, a new deck being put on the back of the fellowship building. And... Um, that's in process right now, but uh, we're thankful for that and uh, the upgrade that's uh, happening there. Uh, very thankful that that's being worked on. Um, now as the, the choir sings, it'll be a new song for us today. And uh, just pray, you know, how marvelous and how wonderful our God is. So. <clears throat> Oh
this morning. Now let's stand together as we sing Love Lifted Me. <clears throat> I was sinking deep and sad, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained with it, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, Songs, faithful loving service to to him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love. things a little bit differently today it's because the new sound system is in place and we're thankful for that so I think there's a couple more tweaks still coming our way but we appreciate all the men that have had a part in that and uh, hopefully if you're watching online today that that will also be a better experience by the upgraded mics and things that are associated we even have a mic on the piano today so you hopefully you can hear that a little bit better as well so uh, greet those around us, say hello to your friends and neighbors, put a smile on your face and say hello.
At the dawn of eternity, when the midst of time is gone, when the choir of heaven gathers to begin redemption's song, I will bow before my Savior in a body new and whole. Then I'll rise to sing his praises while eternal ages roll. I stand redeemed by the blood of Jesus. The price is paid. My stead is that bound me no longer hold me because of Calvary I stand redeemed as I gaze upon my Savior and the wounds he bore for me I will sing of his salvation bought with blood upon the tree while the host of angels listen to a song they cannot sing I will voice my praise to Jesus with a song of the redeemed. I stand redeemed by the blood of Jesus. The price is paid. My debt is gone. The chains that bound me of Calvary I stand redeemed I stand redeemed by the blood of Jesus the dead is paid my dead is chains that bound me no longer hold me because of Calvary. I stand I'm glad we can stand redeemed today, ain't you? 
If you have your Bibles, go with me this morning to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 today. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. I want to thank each and every one of you for making it out to our worship service today. And uh, trust that something that is said or done has been a blessing to you so far. And uh, I'm glad I am redeemed. I'm not, I never tell anybody what I'm preaching. And uh, it's funny that Brother Ted sung that song this morning, and some of the songs were circled around Calvary. This morning, I want to, when we get on into the message, you'll understand where I'm going with this. But uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, when you find your place there, say amen. 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 Begin reading in verse number 1. And I, brethren, when I came unto you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you, Notice this, not himself, not his opinion, but the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom, howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes, none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Verse nine. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Let's go to the Lord in a moment of prayer this morning. My dear, gracious Father, Lord, we want to thank you for another opportunity to come in your house today to worship and praise you. Thank you, God, for each and every one that's made their way out to your house today. Lord, we pray today, Lord, that we came not just to be seen or just not to be counted, but we came to give glory and honor and praise unto you. Lord, we pray for those that are sick and afflicted today. Lord, we pray that you will touch them. And help them today, God, and heal them if it be thy will. Those that are lost and undone without you today, Lord, we pray that you will save them before it's eternally too late. God, we pray today, God, for those that are backslidden today. Lord, we pray that they will give their heart and life back to you so that they can live a life that is pleasing and acceptable unto you, which is their reasonable service. God, we pray today, Lord, that you would hide us behind the cross, that we may not be seen, but that you may be honored today in your house. And all these things we ask in Christ's name, amen. As we look here at 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. We know that 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, if we had time to go into all of it today, and I don't, but we know that it would tie into 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, where Paul wrote, it was the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe, if I remember that correctly. And we also know that he talked about the preaching of the cross to them which are lost is what? Foolishness. In other words, it makes no sense to them. So today as we tie all of that together and we get into 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, I want to preach on this simple thought. We may be here a week or two, but I want to preach on this simple thought today on the wisdom of the cross. The wisdom of the cross. There's been a lot of preaching about the cross and the work of the cross, but there's a ton of wisdom that Paul points out here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 when it comes to the cross. We know today that had it not been for the cross that none of us would be saved by the grace of God. Am I right about that? Without the Hebrews 9.22 says, without the shedding of blood, there is what? No remission of sin. And we know today that you and I must come by the way of the cross. Jesus said in John's gospel chapter number 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life, 
And no man cometh unto the Father, but how? But by me. And when we think about that today, there's a lot of men and women who are trying to get to heaven without going by the way of the cross. And if you're trying to get to heaven today based on your good works, then you will fail. If you're trying to get to heaven today based on your good words, you will fail. If you're trying to get to heaven today based on your good, on any good thing that you have done, you will fail. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 64 and verse number 6 that our righteousnesses are as unclean rags in the sight of God. And when we think about that today, that means nothing that you and I can do can merit the salvation of God. When I think about the wisdom of the cross today, number one, I want us to look at the effectual preaching of the cross. The effectual preaching of the cross. When we think about the effectual preaching of the cross today, I want to say, number one, it does not require, and there's nothing against none of these things that I'm going to say, all right? But number one, it does not require eloquent speech. Preacher, how do you get that? Go with me back to verse number one. But when I came unto you, I came not with excellently excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of who? God. Paul said, I may not be the best speaker, but I come with some important words. Today, friend, when we look at the work of the cross, there's a lot of people who can get up and give motivational speeches. I watch a certain I watch a certain group of preachers from time to time, and I watch some on TV on Sunday nights, and you can figure out what time and what channel they come on. And some of them can be excellent speakers, and they can give powerful demonstrations, but there are times that when they do that, they miss the point of giving the gospel. And today as men of God, we can preach beautiful messages or beautiful sermons, but if we fail to present the gospel and fail to present Christ for who he is, then you and I have failed as preachers. You and I have failed as Sunday school teachers. And today when we think about that, it requires not excellent, eloquent speech. Second of all today, it does not require an education. When I think about that today, Paul went down with me in verse number 4. In verse number 4, the Bible says, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's what? Wisdom. In other words, I didn't have to study a group of books in order to come and tell you about the saving grace of God. There's nothing wrong with education. There's nothing wrong with Bible college. Do not get me wrong. I'm not throwing off on that at all. But today we've got a lot of people who's went through the motions of these things, but they've never had a personal experience with God. I can read books about revival. I can read books about prayer. I can read books that would increase my knowledge on multiple issues. But today, before I can do that, I must put those things into practice in my personal life in order for me to be effective as a Christian. So today, when I look at this, I look thirdly at under the effectual preaching. Preacher, what's the effectual preaching takes? It takes a personal experience with God. In order to be able to tell someone about the cross, number one, you're going to have to experience the work of the cross. When I think about the work of the cross today, I think, number one, you're going to have to experience the love of God on the cross. Romans chapter number 5 and verse number 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ what? Died for us. We go to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Jesus went on in verse number 17 to say, but God... Uh, went on verse number 17 says I come not to the world to condemn the world but that the world through me might be saved when I think about that today I think about a personal experience with the love of Christ experiencing that love is easier than explaining that love to someone a lost man a lost woman a lost boy a lost girl will never be able to explain explain the love of God. 
Romans chapter number 8 talks about the love of God said neither height nor depth nor anything can separate us from the love of God. So take that today and I want you to think about this. Uh, The next time you go to witness to someone or invite someone to church, when you think about experiencing that love of God, Put yourself on their shoes of who you're witnessing to or inviting to church and ask yourself if I was in their shoes, if I try, if someone tried to explain to me the ultimate love of God, would I understand it? Would you? No. More than likely not unless you've experienced it. Because it's hard to wrap our minds around today how a loving God could love an unlovable world. Are you with me? There are people today that you and I come in contact with that we may not can stand, but God loves them. There are people today that you and I may not agree with, but God loves them. God's love today is unending. God's love today is unconditional. He said he loved the whole world. When you think about him loving the whole world today, that doesn't discriminate any color, any race, any uh, language. It doesn't discriminate uh, if they're anything. He said, I died and I loved the whole world. Today, Today, the gospel can be shared by experiencing the love of Christ. Second of all today, The gospel, in order for us to be effectual in preaching and teaching on the cross, it must not only be experienced in the love, but second of all, you're going to have to experience the forgiveness of God. When I think about the love of God, will you know that before a man can be saved, he must what? Repent. That word repent there, Brother Ted taught on it some this morning, dealing with confession of sins in Sunday school. And when you think about that today, In order for you to be saved by the grace of God, you're going to have to repent of your sins. Repent means to make a 180 degree turn away from your sin to Christ, right? When you repent of your sins, what does God do? He forgives you of all of your sin. He forgives you of your past sin, your present sin, your future sin. I had a deep conversation Wednesday night after church about the ultimate forgiveness of God. And we talked about how God is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our unrighteousnesses as saved people. But this morning, and I hate to piggyback on what Brother Ted said in Sunday school, but there are times in our life that you and I must be specific in our confession to God. There are areas in my life that I fell in daily that I have to go to God and say, God, forgive me again because I have sinned. God, forgive me for an angry attitude. God, forgive me for a bitter spirit. God, forgive me for lusting after my neighbor's new truck. God, forgive me for this. God, forgive me for that. Be specific in your prayer of confession at times. There are people today... Can I steal some of your Sunday school lesson? Talking about confession and forgiveness. There are people today, and you didn't have a clue last night when you was talking to me what I was preaching today. But when there are people today who won't say cleaner life instead of a clean life. I was somewhere working one time, and I moved some appliances around, and there was a bunch of filth around the appliances. So they attempted to clean around the appliances, but they didn't clean the appliances. And when I began to think about that, I thought about people's life today. They're attempting to clean areas of their life, but they're not willing to clean their entire life. If you're in a kitchen and I clean the floor, does that make you want to eat the food off the stove? No. If I, clean the ref- if I clean the oven, but I don't clean the top of the stove, do you want to eat my cooking? Probably not. 
The same way with you and I's lives today with God. We've got areas in our life that we're quick to say, God, I've sinned in this area. God, I've sinned in that area. But there's other little areas that you and I want to keep concealed that we don't want God to mess with. David in Psalm 51 did not discriminate against any part of his life when David said, Lord, I have sinned and my sin is ever before who? Thee. David went a step further and David said, against thee and thee only have I sinned. David went another step further and David said, Lord, create in me a clean spirit. Not a cleaner, but a clean He also went on and said, purge me with hyssop. When you think about purging today, you and I, there's times that we do spring cleaning, okay? Some comes later than others. And we'll purge a closet. But you know, sometimes when we purge that closet, we get selective about certain things we're not going to throw away out of that closet. When we ask God to purge us, you and I must not be selective And asking God what he can purge out of our lives. But you and I must be wholeheartedly and say, God, take this out of my life. And when you do that today, friend, you receive the ultimate. And I said all that to get to the forgiveness, okay? We say say that today to get to the ultimate forgiveness of God. A God who died for every sin will forgive all sins with the exception of one, which is what? Blasphemy. Against the Holy Ghost. When we think about that today, imagine explaining the love of Christ to an unbeliever, but second of all, imagine explaining the forgiveness of Christ to an unbeliever. I'll never forget many years ago, we was in a revival meeting. I was a little fellow. I remember the lady, I couldn't tell you what her name was, but I remember her. I never forget that we was in the middle of that revival meeting and she came to the altar and she came several times that week and finally one night we was down there at the altar with her and she asked this question, can God forgive every sin that's been committed in my life? And the ultimate answer was yes, he can. She said, but you don't understand, I've done something really bad in my life. And we said, God is faithful and just to forgive all sin. She couldn't wrap her mind around that God could forgive her no matter how dark the sin may appear to the eyes of man. The ultimate forgiveness of God. Then I think about thirdly today, the effectual preaching of the cross requires not only a personal experience with his love, a personal confession, a personal experience with his forgiveness. Fourthly today, yeah, we ain't going to get much further. Fourthly today, it comes with the personal experience of the grace of God. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. And that not of yourselves is a gift of what? God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. When we think about that today, we experience the love of God. We experience the personal confession. We experience the ultimate forgiveness, but then we experience the grace of God. And God bestows on us new grace, how often? Every day. Paul had a thorn in his side, and and the Bible says, Paul wrote, My grace, talking about God told him, my grace is sufficient for thee. This morning, there are several different types of graces that you and I will experience. Number one, you'll experience the saving grace. It's where you and I, when we give our life to Christ, God grants us grace in our lives. Saving grace. Second of all, you'll experience living grace. That's the new grace that God gives you each and every day of your Christian walk with God. It's that grace that you will show unto others. It's that grace that when you see the homeless person, you're not cold-hearted, but you're, you say, hey, maybe I can help them. Let me, give you, let me give you something on this. The last few weeks in the food pantry... We went to Dollar Tree, and we bought a bunch of Bibles. All right? 
We've been sticking those Bibles in the blessing box out there, and those Bibles have been getting taken. When I think about that, I think about the grace that is being shown not only to the physical side of man or woman, whoever's taking them, I don't know exactly who's taking them, but it also is being shown to the spiritual side of that person. The grace to be able to help someone in their time of need physically may be the grace that they find spiritually when they open up that word of God. A personal experience with the grace of God. Thirdly, on the grace, not only do I believe there's a living grace, a saving grace, but thirdly today, I believe there's a dying grace. The grace that God gives every saint before they make their entrance into heaven. There are people today that are sick and they're struggling, but when you ask them, hey, are you worried about dying? No, why? Because God will take care of me. When I think about that, I think about my mom. My mom is a very sick lady, and my mom throws blood clots often. And there are times that I worry about that, and there'll be times that I'll call her and I'll talk to her and I'll say, hey, ain't you worried? about a blood clot in your lung. That's where most of them go. And she says, no, I'm not worried. And I'd say, why ain't you worried? She'll say, because God's got this. And God will give me the grace to face another day. And to face another day. And God will continue to grant me that grace until it's my time to go. And I think about that today, and I think about how you and I can share that personal experience of grace with someone else, but they'll never understand it until they experience it for themselves. Fourthly today, not only is it the experience of grace, but fourthly today I want us to look at the experience of faith. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things what? Not seen. When we think about faith today, the Bible says the just shall live by what? Faith and not by what? Sight. When we think about faith today, explaining to someone faith is hard to do. Someone was telling me last week that they knew a man and he was pretty much an agnostic. And they said there were times that he would confront them about the Bible and about God. And he said he got tired of it. So one day he said, let me ask you a question. This man asked the agnostic, so what's that? So let me ask you this. If I'm right, or if you're right and I'm wrong, what do I have to lose as a Christian? And he said, nothing, I don't guess. He said, but what if I'm right as a Christian and you're wrong as an agnostic? What do you have to lose? He said, it don't work like that. He said, why don't it work like that? And today, explaining faith to someone, one of the easiest ways of explaining faith was a man was flying a kite, and a kid walked by and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm flying a kite. And the kid looked up and said, I don't see a kite. And that man said, that kid said, so how do you know the kite's up there? He said, I feel a tug as it moves. Today, you and I have not ever seen God you and I have never met Jesus Christ face to face, but through the eyes of faith, you and I have accepted him and the work that he has prepared for us. And every day we live by faith and not by sight, trusting and knowing that when Christ shall return, he will meet us in heaven. Our faith is not in this world. Our faith is not in our money. Our faith is not in our government. But our faith is in God. And explaining faith to someone is impossible unless you've experienced it. As we stand to our feet this morning, let me ask you how effectual would you be if you had to preach on the cross. And my speech was not with enticing words, 
of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Today, you and I can do nothing without the power of God. This morning, as Miss Janet plays something softly and Brother Ted gets ready to lead us in a song of invitation, let me ask you this morning, have you experienced that work on the cross in your life? Preacher, I've gone to church. That ain't what I ask. Preacher, I've... I've been a Sunday school teacher, I've been a deacon, I've been a choir member, I've been all of these things. That's good. But have you ever experienced that work of God in your life? This morning, if I ask you to explain to me the love of God, the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, and our faith in God, without that personal experience, it'd be impossible for you to explain But this morning, you don't have to explain none of that to me. But you will have to give an account to it to God and how you've either accepted it or rejected it. As she plays softly this morning and as we sing, Jesus, I come, maybe today you want to come around the altar and say, Lord, I want to thank you for the work of the cross and the wisdom that you've bestowed on me and for the personal experience that I've had. Maybe today you want to come and say, Lord, I've never experienced it, but I'd like to. Maybe you've got some other needs, some other things in your life that you need God's help with. Whatever you need may be today, why don't you come? Say, preacher, I don't want to pray by myself. Ask me, and I'll pray with you, and we'll get a hold of God together as we sing this morning, Jesus, I come. Out of my bondage, sorrow, and night, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come, into thy freedom, gladness, and light. Jesus, I come to thee, out of my sickness, into thy I come to thee out of my shameful failure and loss Jesus I come Jesus I come into thy glorious gain of thy cross Jesus, I come to Thee, out of earth's sorrows into Thy balm, out of life's storms and into Thy calm, out of distress to I come to as Janet plays through one more verse bow your head do do some business with God here today heard some pretty powerful preaching this morning what do you got to get right with him how would you define the cross Would you be able to give that message to somebody?
Amen. I believe the invitation be sufficient this morning. Is every heart clear this morning before we dismiss? If it is, say amen. Amen. How many of you are glad you came to church today? Amen. Amen. Thank you each and every one of you for coming. We look forward to seeing you Wednesday night. We'll pick up in Romans chapter number 12, 13, 12. We're getting close. Was it 12 or 13? I don't know. I wasn't here. 13. You had to work. You weren't paying attention, Wins? No, I'm kidding. It's 13. I seen if y'all knew. Oh, it's 13. But we're looking forward to getting in Romans chapter number 13. And I hope you've learned something out of that. If every heart's free this morning, we dismiss in a word of prayer. And I will ask uh, Brother Mike Riddle if he will close this out prayer.